Oh boy, <clears throat> hot on the heels of that last video. Uh, I think it's maybe two minutes later. <laughs> uh, we're going to look at how you can uh, further customize some of the results that you get back <clears throat> from a query store using my free open source. Uh, I mean, it's free to everyone but me. I, I charge myself a very very high consulting rate to use it. Uh, how you can use that to filter down to specific queries, plans, stuff like that. Now, uh, again, we're going we're gonna to start off with the help parameter because the help parameter will give you information about what all the parameters can do. Uh, if I add parameters, change parameters, anything like that, this will get updated so you can stay on top of exactly uh, what what's going on and what, what you might care about. But uh, getting down a little bit further in here, uh, this is there's a whole section of parameters that help that can help you uh, filter your results down to a specific set of things that you might care about. So if we uh, look at the full list here, uh, I'm going to walk you through these and then we'll, we'll I'll show you some examples of them. Uh, we have execution type, which will tell you which allows you to filter on queries that are either uh, you know, uh, successful, failed for some reason. There are, you know, different reasons why queries might fail. You can find ones that ran, or you can find ones that, like, timed out, errored out, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to look for a specific store procedure in Query Store, you can use the proce procedure schema and procedure name parameters. Uh, procedure schema will default to DBO, so if you have procedures in different schemas, you will need to provide that schema in order to successfully find them. Uh, if you want to include a list of plan IDs or query IDs or just a single one, uh, we'll, I'll split any comma delimited value in here uh, out to a list and pass along and pass that into a table for searching. Uh, likewise, um, you can also choose to ignore some plan and query IDs. By default, uh, SP Quickie Store will filter things out like um, uh, creating, uh, altering indexes, altering tables, uh, stats updates, um, whether they're um, you know manual or whether they happen as part of a query, so that you don't get some of that noise in there that might happen from those. Like you don't need to know that creating or rebuilding an index took an hour because you can't tune that. I don't, if it's useful for you to find, let me know. I can you know change the default on that. But uh, otherwise, it's like, what are you going to do with that with that information? Um, likewise, uh, also there's a, a section in here. So what would happen to me uh, quite a bit uh, in my consulting efforts is I would find uh, queries from other sources where query plans were not necessarily part of the uh, the data collection. Uh, if you ever look at the blocked process report or the XML deadlock report, what you'll see is that SQL handles for the queries involved will be logged in there along with the query text, but not the query plan, which is understandable because it would be a concerted effort to include a query plan and all that. And um, staging XML inside of XML sounds a bit, sounds a bit nightmarish even to me, a person who spends a lot of time in XML. So uh, yeah, I get that. I totally get that, but a lot of the times when you're trying to figure out a blocking or deadlocking scenario, the query plan becomes really, really important because the shape of the query plan, um, you know, uh, lookups, you know, missing indexes, uh, things like that can really play into if, uh, like, the reason why there was significant blocking or deadlocking. Uh, there is also a query text search parameter, so if you know like if you're looking for like some entity framework query or something where, you know, uh, maybe something that was generated by dynamic SQL, something like that, uh, you can search for the specific text. Um, on its own, SP Quickie Store will, if you don't have um, uh, wildcard searches uh, on either end of your query, it'll add them in. Uh, for you so that we, you know, search the text of, of, for everything that you might find. But if you have weird spacing in, inside of the query, like if it's like select, con like, like carriage return, like big tabs and stuff like that, other weird white space issues, you might need to add uh, your own parentheses inside of the string to search for stuff. So uh, let's just to demo some things real quick here. Let's run this. And we'll find that there's a store procedure in here called vote sniffing. Let's uh, 
I'm not, well, I'll, I'll type in a demo. Screw it. Rules be damned. So let's look for at, so since that is in the uh, DBO schema, we don't need to worry about uh, supplying the procedure schema. If this were in a different schema, we would need to tell it. But since this is, oops. Oh, sniffing, I think I spelled that right. Since this is just in the DBO schema, we can run this and we can search for a specific procedure name. Now, one thing that I talked about in the first video was uh, how the all plan IDs parameter can be really useful. Uh, and that is because if we use this, let's just say that this was not a store procedure. Let's say that this was a regular um, a regular old, you know, uh, query dynamic SQL, you know, entity framework, something like that. Uh, query where um, we had no idea how else to identify it, but we wanted to look for specific plans. What we could do, stick that in there, and we could get back all the plan IDs that we cared about from this list. Right? Pretty neat. At least I think so. Um, if we wanted to ignore any of this stuff, do any of that, we totally could. Um, you can do the same thing with query IDs, right? So if we uh, come back up here, we grab query ID 312, we can say include query IDs, and we can look for 312, and we can just focus in on uh, anything that query ID 312 might have given us. Um, other things that can be useful, um, you know, if you want, like, let's say that you had a bunch of query timeouts uh, over the weekend, right? Let's say, or at night, or sometime, some other time when you weren't looking at things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we could look at the execution type, and we could see we could see that valid inputs are regular, aborted, and exception. Uh, I don't know if I have any aborted or accepted queries in here, but let's take a look. And let's see, do we have anything aborted? I have no idea possible it's entirely possible we do look at that I have two aborted queries in here uh, I don't think I have any queries that would have failed but you know that's because my queries never fail I I only quit on them <laughs> it's never the queries fault it's it's just me running out of patience uh, so anyway this is different ways you can narrow down um, you can narrow your search down to what you care about from the results that you see here I'm gonna soapbox a little bit and say this is one of the big reasons why I wrote this store procedure because right now the query store GUI doesn't give you a way to search through any of these things or filter down to any of these things. You can track certain query IDs, but you have to find that query ID and right click it and track it and all this other stuff. You can't like manipulate what query store brings back in a meaningful way to search through things for any of this stuff. And this is all important stuff when you're doing query tuning work, when you're doing consulting work where you are walking into a server that you may have never seen before, where you're walking into a server where you might have to be able to, you might have to be able to put together pieces of a situation really quickly. You know, again, coming back to like block process or XML deadlock report, like you have to find those queries, you have to find those plans, you have to get in there and do stuff really quickly. So uh, this is uh, all, all sort of invaluable stuff for me in my day-to-day -day consulting work. And that's why I put it in here. You know, if the query store GUI were uh, um, written by someone who, uh, or designed by someone who, who cares about humanity, we would be able to search and filter to these things a bit more easily. But alas, uh, we, we do not have those options currently. I would love to film a video where I say SP Quickie Store is no longer necessary because the query store GUI is, is completely up to snuff and offers you a commensurate experience. But uh, for me, uh, I, I still need all this stuff when I'm when I'm working on things uh, in my my day to day life. So I made it easy for me. I made it easy for you. Uh, you know, again, please please love me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's that's about the end of this one. Um, you know, the usual rigmarole: like, subscribe, join my email list, hire me to do work for you. No, oh, whatever, or don't. You know, maybe I'll just go. Maybe buy me a coffee someday, so I can so I can. Pour, pour whiskey in it and have a, have a good morning. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I will see you in the next video where we will talk about something else entirely with SP Quickie Store. All right, cool. Feel good about this one. Only coughed once. It's kind of almost a new record for me. All right, goodbye. <laughs>